And the postcode for that one, please. EN48BB. Um, echo November 4, 8, Bravo, Bravo, yeah? Yeah. And what was, what was the number again, sorry? 180. 180, sorry. I'm only getting number 20 to number 42 for that postcode. I can't help that. <laughs> Um, I, can you confirm your date of birth for me, please? Um, so that you call non now the best contact number for yourself. What number have you got? Uh, so it's 0330 No, what number you got that I'm calling you from? Yeah, that's the, for some reason, that's the number that's coming through on my system. What's it? 0330? Zero zero eight one zero six five. That should be fine, yeah. Um, can I ask your name again, sir? Please. Bre Brendan. Brendan or Brandon? Brendan, B R E N D O N. And is that your surname or your first name? That's my first name. My surname is Vespa, V E S P A. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, you got the reference number. Did, uh, did I give you the reference number? Yeah, so it's F036133. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you have an email address that you'd like to provide today? No, no. Um, uh, no. Email's a nightmare. That's fine. Mm. Uh, that's fine. Um, and are you currently employed? I, are you entitled to ask me about my employment status? Okay, so we can ask, obviously, you're more than you're more within your rights to refuse the answer to it. It just helps to protect the case there if you're um, further down the line, that's all. How does it help you? Uh, so if you wasn't employed or you are employed, obviously, that um, shows at a certain level of income. So obviously, if you wasn't employed and you was in receipt of the universal credit, you could be counted as a struggling person. Um, if you obviously are employed and this, you're a single person living on your own, you might have more expendable income. I understand. So, mm, cases, so you can profile people like that, right? Um, so and also you, you can you can make a profile of the person kind of thing. Yeah. So you you don't obviously you don't have to um answer the question. Yeah. I'm a billionaire, so I don't need to be, I don't work, you understand, I don't need to, um, okay. I don't work for okay, people. Okay, me for two seconds, and I'm just going to do a quick link search on the account, okay, just to make sure there's no other active account. Okay. Okay, bear with me two seconds. At the moment, I can't see any other active accounts for you, so there's a total outstanding balance of £1,121. Will you be making a payment in full today with credit or debit card? What was it? £1,121. Um, okay, you accept the uh, debit card? Yes, we do, yeah. And what was this for, this uh, item, this money? Uh, so this was failing to give information relating to the identification of the driver slash rider of a vehicle when required. Uh, it was a warrant issued by Northampton uh, Magistrates Court. Northampton Magistrates Court. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't remember any such warrant. Um, how do you? Uh, what's the warrant number? Uh, so I wouldn't have that information. Sorry, we wouldn't need to keep the warrants. Uh, you would need to contact the client directly for that information. Okay. Who who is the client? His 
match is going to play through no services. Which, which branch? I would be North and the Magistrate Court. Oh, I see. I have contacted them, you know, sir, and uh, they don't have any such warrant. I wouldn't be able to advise you on that, sorry. So this was issue, uh, this warrant was issued on the 24th of the 4th, 2021. Uh, and what's the warrant number? Uh, so I've not got the warrant number. I do have a reference um, number that you can contact the courts with to, so they can find this case for you. No, but I would need the court case number, boss. Okay, so the reference number for the for the court for this account for the courts is the, the, two one zero zero. Uh huh. Five one six. Yeah. Seven H H for hotel. But the court works on a case number. It doesn't work on reference number, sir. So, so if you give them this reference number in Northern the Magistrates Court, yeah, it would it would. Um, it would reference them to this case that's been sent to us. I, I have a feeling there might be an error somewhere, you know? Okay, so obviously if there is anything that um, the client has done incorrectly, you're more than welcome to dispute that with them. Um, so we can only work off the information that we've been provided by the client. Well, how do I know your information is correct? Uh, so... You would need to contact the client directly for to make sure that everything that we've given yeah, you is correct information. What if there's an error on your side? I wouldn't know what type of error we would have on our side, sorry. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we only work from, from the information that we've been provided. I understand. But sometimes people provide information and then it's translated wrong, like you don't have the case number. Okay, so we wouldn't we wouldn't be provided the uh, warrant number on the system for any of our cases. Oh, I see. Um, we don't need uh, warrant um, cases for any of the of the clients because the courts would keep them for us. Well, how would you execute the warrant if you don't have it? So, so all of our enforcement agents, if it does escalate to the point where an enforcement agent needs to attend the address, yeah, uh, they've all been signed off by the court, so they they are allowed to enforce warrants. But how would they enforce the warrant? You don't have it. It wouldn't be the, the physical paper version of a warrant anymore. Um, they would just need to be signed off by the courts and there would need to be a warrant issued and then they can enforce it. But how can you enforce a warrant you don't have, boss? wouldn't need to keep the warrant. Now, the, the, the client, the, so the courts can keep the warrant. We wouldn't, if we wouldn't hold on to the warrant ourselves. Yeah, we don't need to do that legally to to enforce it. I understand. You know, um, on the paperwork it says agent's reference number, enforcement agent's reference number. So that's the that's the reference number for master holders. Yeah, and it says if I don't pay, the enforcement agent will visit me and take into goods into okay. control, and sell them. So, uh, mm. um, so at the moment, there is no enforcement agent assigned to the case. Oh, um, I see. So if an enforcement agent is assigned onto the case, he would attend the address and look for a payment in full. But if he had to do that, then he would look at seating goods to cover the total balance. Right. Um, so you're so doing all this. Is... You're doing all this, and you don't actually have a warrant. And so, you... so we have a warrant. Mm. We just, so we have a warrant, but we give. So we have a duty of care. So we give a certain amount of time for our customers to contact us yeah. to make a payment or send a payment arrangement if they can't afford a payment in full. Um, I if could... no contact is made then or they refuse to send up a yeah. payment arrangement or make a payment in full, that's when the case escalates then to an enforcement agent. I could swear you told me a few minutes ago you don't have a warrant and you don't even know the warrant number. No, so we do have a warrant. Oh, you so do have a warrant. warrant. Yeah, but we don't have the warrant number, so we wouldn't need to keep warrant there is a warrant issued uh, by Northampton County Court and we're informed mm. in that warrant. I understand. So you actually have the warrant, yeah? Yeah, but I wouldn't be able to do it that with that information myself. Okay. I see. But you have it, but you can't access it. Is that correct? Yeah, I yeah, so if we need if we needed more information on it then we could access it. Like if I obviously went with uh, somebody further up uh, in the company, mm -hmm. uh, but all the warrants would, but we don't need to um, give warrants out to the customers. I understand. Um, mm, 
I've heard of uh, situations where bailiff uh, they, they've lied that they have a warrant when they don't actually have a warrant. Um, so what would what would be my protection in this situation? Uh, the only thing I can suggest that you do then is contact Northampton County Court so that you can verify that we do have one. Northampton County Court. Uh, sorry, Magistrates Court. That's my mistake. Okay. Northampton Magistrates Court. Have you got their address so they, uh, at all? I'm uh, not. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no. no yeah so we've uh we work for a lot of different clients so we don't need to take uh, all their contact information i'm having a feeling there's a serious error here because um i did contact the court and i did contact the um cps and they told me in writing okay. they there was no prosecution on this matter okay so all i can all i can um refer you to then is to contact uh, Northampton Magistrates Court, give them the uh, uh, the court reference number that's on the letter. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you... Uh, do you say then that you need, you need this uh, contact in the yeah. court and they will, link, they will link our account um, then to the one that we have and they'll be able to assist you further then on the information on their end. Thank you, Mr. Vesper. But, but can I just... Um, uh, um, you, you heard of Resolver on Resolver? No. Sorry? You, have you heard of Resolver? I've not, no, sorry. All right. It's just a kind of a contact communication system that you can use. So I used it and on there I got the um, response. Um, um, no, so I'm only um, on the triage department, so I deal with the calls that come in and meet, um, first of all and find out exactly what the purpose of the call is and they need to speak yeah. to somebody else or if they're just here to make a payment. I understand. I understand. So this payment, it says, how much is it? You said it was um eleven hundred and twenty one pounds. Yeah, one thousand one hundred twenty one pounds exactly. Yeah. But your paperwork says it's eight eight six. So how did that change? Okay, so uh, on the case statement, I can see that there's a eight hundred and eleven pound original balance, mm -hmm. and there's a seven five pound complaint stage um charge. And there's also a £235 enforcement agent charge on there as well, as the case has already gone to an enforcement agent once. Oh, um, um, I could swear you told me earlier there was no enforcement agent on the case. No, there's, there's not at the moment. So the case was unassigned from the enforcement agent on the 13th of this month. Mm -hmm. And who is that new enforcement uh, so agent? There isn't one at the moment. So there was the previous one uh, was a Mr. Bradbury. Mr. Bradbury, what's his full name? I wouldn't provide his full name for his own protection, sorry. What, you think I'm going to hurt him? Uh, no, it's not just for that as well. So people wouldn't be able to try to find him on social media um, and obviously harass him when he's not at work. I thought, that, I thought the bailiffs were the one who harassed people, not the other way around. So it, it can, so if people will, um, if they find out their full names, people can take videos of them from on social media, mm. things like that. So we obviously we don't get full names to protect them. Have you got a phone number for him? Uh, not anymore, no, because he's not assigned to the case anymore. I understand. So he wouldn't be needed for this case anymore. So, okay. So if I wanted to file a complaint against him, for example, I'll look him up on the bailiff register to see if he's, you know, if he's registered, how would I do that? Uh, so if you wanted to make a complaint through us, um, no, I don't want to make a co oh, I don't want to make a complaint through you. I want to make a complaint through the proper channel, not to you. Um, I wouldn't be able to advise on that. Sorry, so we are not uh, regulated by anybody. We follow the, the guidance of Civia. The Civia is just a little one man tin pot little comp. They're nothing, mate. I know. So, so, so <laughs> Civia is, uh, is a it's a very big organization. Yeah. No, they're not. Trust me. I have dealings with them. They're not. They've got okay. no authority okay. whatsoever for anything. Okay. There but any, listen, listen. You, you said you said um this Mr. Bradbury, they're self-employed people. So I, I want to know his full name because uh I want to contact I, I him. Told you, I, I, won't be, I won't be providing him uh, like mm. his full name. So you're 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 um you're colluding in a fraud, um, Mr. Brendan Vespa. 
if that's what you want to believe, as I have said, now you're more than welcome to contact the client to confirm all these details. No, I'm um, talking to you. You're sending me threatening letters. I'm not signing. Is it legal to send out documents that are not signed by anybody? Yes. It is. And is it legal yeah, to so send me correspondence with QR codes on, on it, which I can't read? QR codes. So the QR code is just to access the website. How am I supposed to know that? It will. Uh, so I, I have an IT background, boss. I can tell you the dangers of QR code and the nastiness and machine language that uh, is used for fraud so all the time. Well, why should I pay online when you when you're when you, why should I pay online two hundred and thirty five pounds for an enforcement agent fee that you can't tell me what his name is so I can um verify the figures. So unfortunately, you now if there's if we're just going to go around in circles, there'll be nothing further that I can assist you with. So you so want I, you want I, to I charge me, Mr. Brendan Vespa? You want to charge me two hundred and thirty five pounds for an enforcement agent? That you can't tell me who he is. And I've given you his uh, this surname. And and, and I you think I can find him you. on the bailiff register with that? So this is exactly why we don't give out the full name of an enforcement agent because people would try to harass him. He's no longer assigned to the case, and he uh, he has no. No, no, but you you got two hundred and thirty five. You got two hundred and thirty five pounds paid to him for um for uh a counterfeit warrant. So it's not a counterfeit warrant, and I have explained that you are more than welcome to contact my How do you you don't even have the warrant number, so it must be counterfeit. Okay, if, if, if there's nothing further I can help you with now, I'm gonna have to leave. Well, I'm I'm but gonna I put you on I'm gonna put you on notice, Brendan Vespa, that you are knowingly participating in a mass fraud and money laundering operation on the back of falsified warrants. Okay, if that's what you would like to believe, as I have said, you can contact his Majesty's Court if I do not serve this with the reference number. That is but can I ask you, I you know, Mr. Brendan Vespa, the, by the way, I'm recording this here and it's going on social media, just to let you know. Yeah, um, that's absolutely fine. The thing is, the, the £235 fee that you added for the, um, the, the warrant that you don't have and the enforcement agent that you can't name, yeah? Does it include VAT? Can you tell me? Sorry? Does it include VAT? That's not that's the total balance. So the total balance that I've told you is the 100% payment that would be made. There would so be no further charges on top. How much is the VAT in that? Because it says on your letterhead you're registered for VAT. Uh, I wouldn't be able to assist you with that. I don't have that information. So you're running a VAT scam? As I've already explained now, sir, there is nothing further that I can help you with. Uh, there would be nothing further for us to discuss. I well, if you if you, you don't have a warrant number, can I ask you because that your authority to handle my private and confidential data is your warrant, and if you don't have a warrant number, can I kindly ask you to delete all my data of your system? Uh, no. So as long as we do have the warrant, uh, we wouldn't be deleting any case information that is still relevant to the case while it's active. Well, you don't have a warrant. You don't have a warrant number. I had it confirmed from the CPS. There was never any prosecution in this matter. So you are knowingly, you are knowingly, you are knowingly engaging the extortion business on the back of fake warrants, fabricated warrants, that, warrants that don't exist. Yeah, and and you you guys you 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 guys you guys you guys are stealing. You're stealing and trafficking children on the same method. This is the disturbing part of it, yeah? And you're taking the wages and the full sorry, knowledge. Sorry, 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 this is on social media, yeah? You, you, you can sue me if you think I'm okay. exaggerating. You are, you are trafficking okay. children in the same manner, yeah? You take them with fake court orders. Yeah, and in my own case, some of some of you bastards have gone to jail. So I'm just letting you know that. And Kenneth Warby, you're the next in the queue. Thank you. You're a scammer and a liar. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. When will these things reach a jury? When will it reach? These people are operating with judicial immunity. Nobody can sue them. They will never get tried in front of a jury so they can just carry on making as much money 
as you can imagine, and laundry offshore. I joined the movement because this is what the, all these scams come down to the false court order. So let's stop it. Stop court order scam, www.scambuster.tv. Get, get on board. We have to get compensation for every fake court order we've been harassed with. Thanks.